everything. So I'm so happy he's uh, with us. Whatever. Um, uh, regarding how I'm feeling, well, it's kind of crazy because as many of you know, I have two little kids and also my wife is a teacher and I'm also a teacher at the university and I had some online lessons and well, it's been a, a mess. <laughs> Every day at home is uh, a, a little bit difficult, but at the same time it's nice because we've been together for two months, 20, 20 four hours a day and this is something good for us as a family. <laughs> uh, regarding uh, people working, uh, everybody is working remotely. Uh, we can go at the university if we need it, but uh, we are advised to stay at home. So I'm mostly, well, we are mostly working from home. And about computational access to data, we, uh, we are pleased to uh, we have published a new section regarding Jupyter Notebooks and we try to reuse uh, several data sets from uh, different GRAM institutions and this is the link. You can do whatever you want with these uh, notebooks. Uh, you can ask us anything and we are really happy because the University of Maryland contacted us uh, a few days ago because they are interested in reusing them. So we are happy that this is use, useful for others. And about uh, data and digital collections, uh, we are willing to prepare more data sets, but uh, we still have to fight a little bit uh, with our uh, staff uh, to encourage them to provide data sets in open access. Uh, and also including images and full text. I'm sure we will have something, but this is going little by little. Although we have our link open data uh, repository, we would like to have uh, more, including images and full text. About publications, uh, we have accepted a new uh, article regarding load quality, link open data quality, and it's based on the this library, the National uh, Library in France, in Spain, and our digital library. I can send you the preprint uh, version if, if you want to know more about this. We recently, regarding the notebooks, have submitted a new paper regarding the reusing of digital collections from GAM institutions, and we provide the methodology to create collecting as data. So it might be useful for others to encourage them to publish data sets. And also, uh, uh, we have submitted a proposal for programming historian in Spanish, and it has been accepted about uh, reusing digital collections from grand institutions. Uh, we're gonna have to start working on this. And also, well, this is a presentation that we did. I know some of you were there with Wikimedia Spain, Sally and Felipe, thank you for being there. And you have more data there in case you want to know a little bit more. And about future events, uh, we have received a proposal from our university to create a summer school in digital humanities, but uh, it's a still a draft. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do it this year, but we're going to be working on this. Um, we also will have with Sally a presentation with the University of Lancaster in July about how to create the Jupyter Notebook and we will try to reuse some of the data but I have to work on this still and we've been working actively in the translation into Spanish of the Open Eglam book and it's been reviewed by people of our digital library and since COVID, uh, it has been some, we, we had some problems, some issue because of the publication department is closed and we hope to publish the book soon, but I, can, I cannot say when. <laughs> I hope uh, after summer, but I don't know. Uh, Manuel has to help me a little bit with this to fight with the institution. <laughs> And this is more or less everything I wanted to say. Thank you. Cool, thank you, um, Gustavo. Um, so um, let's just get a quick update from um, Mina and Lisa. Yes, thank you, Mahendra. Um, 
it's good to be back in the community. I was in Copenhagen last year. It was a great event and, uh, and I'm happy that we can continue meeting like this even, even if not, not live. Uh, the National Library of Finland is, is one of the pioneers in digitization. We started already uh, at the end of the 1990s and at the moment we have um, over 18 million pages digitized and, and some of them are, are online and uh, part of them are in, in licensed use. We also have uh, basically out of copyright data sets uh, that we offer um, via a data catalog and the data catalog is being developed at the moment. So, so we're looking, looking for more possibilities to, to use that. We also try to have uh, interaction with researchers. For instance, today uh, we had an event uh, with researchers uh, from different universities in Finland and also representatives from the Ministry of Education and Culture. And we were discussing the possibilities of, of the national implementation of the DSM directive and data mining uh, especially. And uh, we had a very good, good discussion and hope that, that we could also uh, give some input to the, to the ministry uh, when, when writing the national, national implementation texts. Um, our uh, current uh, activities around library labs are a new development project that has started this year and will continue until fall next year and in another form even after that. Uh, and my colleague, Lisa Napara, uh, is project manager for this library lab development project. And, uh, and uh, she will tell you now more about what we've been doing and, and what our plans in this project are. So Lisa, please. Yeah, thank you. We have done some benchmarking and we have interviewed a couple of you. And thank you again about that. And Besides the benchmarking interviews and reading, of course, the GLAM book, we have done some survey for our researchers who have already used our digital collection and data. Uh, uh, that survey ended a couple of weeks ago and we got plenty of responses. And ne next we will be interviewing the researchers in order to get to know what they want in details. And we have some research pilot projects and going on and we are applying fun funding for them and there's as well as other things we have a lot of internal discussion what we want to include our lab and and, and with all this information that we have covering this project we are trying to develop our own labs and towards the research centers services and market our digital collection and so that the researchers can find them better. Okay, that's, that's, that's great. Um, I was just going to say, I think this, because you're in the early stages of developing your lab, it might be an ideal opportunity um, to learn more about um, our sort of um, um, Christie's idea around sort of a mentoring scheme. Um, yep, the, the, the idea of sort of pairing up uh, potentially with another um, men mentor, um, possibly somebody who's developed a lab to sort of get some support and just even to get some feedback on some of the ideas that are emerging. I think you might find that really useful. And obviously there's, there's lots of us who've already done this, so you can learn from all our mistakes and do it better than we did. Yes, we had a lot of good response from, from the benchmarking partners that, that we've had. And we're going to, to make some kind of a report on these discussions that we've had. And, and we've promised to share it uh, with, with those who have been involved. And, and we'll see if we can, we can share the, the project even more broadly uh, within this community. So, so it has been very helpful to us. And we're very, we appreciate it very much that you've taken the time to, to help us. Thanks. Um, okay, so just to move on, we've got a, a couple more updates on the on the dock, and then I'm probably going to um, ask some people to give some verbal um, updates, just interesting things that people are working on. But um, Melina, do you want to say a few brief things about some of the work you're you're doing? Um, yes, with pleasure. Uh, thanks, and uh, I'm really pleased to see all of you and to have this discussion. Uh, it felt like we were 
out of touch for, for quite a long time. And I know that everyone was extremely uh, busy. So for us, not being a library uh, and uh, having a master's program, obviously the transition was to uh, continue with our teaching online. And we were very fortunate that Mahendra managed to come and uh, uh, take part in the data management module we have and Armin is uh, coordinating just before the lockdown started. And then we had a digital humanities module which had to be delivered completely online. And uh, I think that the hero of this module was Armin, uh, who was doing the uh, uh, practical teaching of uh, programming and doing this uh, on online is quite uh, interesting. So uh, maybe Armin wants to, to also say something about his experience. Uh, what uh, we are also doing meanwhile is following what's happening in libraries um, and it's very interesting because uh, obviously there are um, in-person services which are uh, being transferred uh, into digital services in these times and there is also some uh, rethinking and repackaging of digital services and um, uh, we also can say that there is a lot of uh, conflicting guidelines at the moment how to reopen libraries so at the moment i am working with some colleagues on a white paper on reopening libraries um, and this is sort of uh, uh, evidence-based uh, looking at the guidance which is uh, coming from different uh, types of libraries these days uh, and also I expect to have uh, a confirmed special issue proposal for uh, the EFLA journal where we really want to pay more attention to what happens in the global south because uh, we can follow lots of developments, EFLA not, uh, probably if you follow what EFLA is doing it has a whole uh, web uh, uh, page with all sorts of uh, updates uh, from libraries around the world but we don't hear a lot from the global south so we want to uh, somehow engage our colleagues there i also did being bulgarian i i, I did a paper at the bulgarian conference about the uh, impact of COVID in uh, libraries there um, it's in bulgarian happy to share if somebody wants to to have a look uh, and uh, here i think uh, what would be really cool is if we can manage to um, communicate stronger as a community the importance of the labs and their role in digital transformation because obviously in this situation there was a lot of push of libraries to rethink uh, what they're doing in the digital domain and I think that this term digital transformation is used very uh, inadequately in many cases uh, if something is delivered in the digital space this doesn't mean that any transformation is really taking place and uh, i really like the idea of christy uh, to have the uh, some sort of a mentoring um, way of uh, spreading knowledge and I, I think especially now in this time this is fantastic i mean this is this is very very uh, suitable and i hope that this will uh, uh, find a good development. I, I know that we will be discussing it later and I, I sense that other people are also happy about this. I don't know if Armin wants to add something to our experiences. Um, I, I, I sort of put myself on the list and uh, we didn't coordinate that he will be joining the call as well. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe uh, the, the only thing that I uh, maybe want to add is uh, COVID uh, related. I'm uh, very sorry that our students, they were looking so much forward uh, to going on uh, internships. And uh, I think a couple of them were also planning to go into labs. And uh, uh, we've, we've talked about this a lot in, in our teaching and now it didn't happen. So uh, everybody's disappointed. So we had the digital humanities course and we were doing a little more teaching about that. Um, and uh, I still owe uh, Mahendra a blog post, uh, so I, I have to think about this. Um, and uh, also with the Digital Humanities course and Milena, we want to write an article about that experience uh, to, so that um, we'll see. So personally, I'm thinking about that idea of having something maybe called a, a pop-up lab or something where Basically, there is there is no lab, but there is a set of uh, maybe approaches and um, um, tools 
uh, that you basically you go into a classroom or in, in a room of uh, interested people and then you're saying okay let's uh, just add water and and mix it and 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 have some recipes to to to, to do that so yeah so this is what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about a little bit. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Nella, do you want to, are you okay to give a quick update? Are you, are you still there? Yes, yes I'm still okay. here. <laughs> um, you might hear some background noises. I'm, I'm, I'm the example of working with three kids in a room at the moment. Um, let me just see. Uh, so obviously, we've—I I personally have been uh, returned to back to basics for work because there's very little time that can be spent. So a lot of the uh, exciting ideas uh, are slow, if not uh, waiting to be uh, taken up. Um, but uh, mainly, we have been making progress in the field of opening up our data by finally managing to uh, uh, implement the viewer to be able to see uh, the legal status of our digitized objects, so the digital objects. Uh, so now we can finally say some of it is open. Whatever can be open is open. So everything before 1900, that's Gay Living Libraries policy, uh, is, open, uh, is offered as open data. Um, so we do that. At the moment, we also have uh, OCR, uh, project going on for historical censuses, uh, about which uh, my colleague and myself recently uh, written a blog. We use our blog posts to actually document how we try to go about things. I think we are quite different uh, an institution than many of your institutions are because we are rather small, we're not a national library. Um, so our means are very limited. It's part it's actually done aside the operation that is basically what we have to do. And I think, I hope it might help other libraries uh, to get inspired and to try things themselves as well. Um, I will have to look in the document. So uh, we've also been working uh, through our DH uh, internship students on uh, a first implementation of a Jupyter notebook just to see how it works. And, and we will now try to reach our researchers with it to actually, we want to use it as showcases for what metadata from the library collections could be used at. Um, by the end of July, we should have three collections available uh, on a metadata level as data, so not the content. It's about um, historical and manuscript materials and uh, image materials, um, but the uh, actual images are open data and the data can then be made available through our GitHub um, account. Um, what else can I say? I think it would be really cool if people would actually be interested in our data. We have uh, now, <laughs> uh, if we could get them to find our data and if they could realize what they could do with it. Because uh, we've had a, a questionnaire uh, running with our researchers at KU Leuven um, and we are now analyzing the uh, response to it. Um, and then we will try to go from there. We did a similar uh, questionnaire about five to six years ago. Uh, which set us on the trail of, OC, you know, uh, putting more resources towards OCR. Uh, so we're trying to do that. Um, and I think that would be about what I've written down in the document. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just looking at a few others. Um, Peter, do you want to say something briefly? Um, would you be okay to do that? Yeah, I can see. It's, well, hello. Uh, it's my first time partic participating, but I think there have been some people from National Library of Estonia before, maybe. Uh, but uh, we've been uh, working on opening up our collections and making them accessible for text and data mining. So currently we've been working with the newspaper corpora. We're getting close to having the uh, open uh, texts uh, being easily downloadable and, and processable. And we're adding um, 
natural language processing uh, layer on top of that. So you could do more easily these text mining <coughs> projects. Um, and uh, we have uh, kept it quite simple. So we are just assembling um, a set of scripts, a set of examples that you could kind of uh, take a lead from or, or work with um, and put them up as Jupyter Notebook so people could uh, get started themselves. And uh, yeah, from this process, the, there is a digital humanities lab uh, emerging here. Mostly we're working with texts uh, so far. Okay, cool. I think that's all I need to say. Okay. Um, Christina, do you want to say a little bit about RLUK? Yes, sure. Um, yes, I will be also um, brief. So where there are mainly two two updates for me. So one what, one is about the work we are currently doing uh, with our members to just understand the impact of COVID nineteen or um, um, member libraries uh, within RLUK, and that means libraries across the UK and Ireland. So uh, I've included some some links in the document so um, about our UK's response to COVID-19 so one of our programs is the capturing COVID-19 um, uh, program and more specifically uh, my work so I'm looking at um, what libraries are collecting at the moment in terms of the COVID-19 crisis and uh, we're also uh, looking to gather information about the potential use of, of this material for scholarship and other other types of collaborations and purposes. Um, also, we managed to launch, so unfortunately due to the COVID-19 crisis, we had to postpone some of our programs, but we, um, including our RLUK conference that usually takes place in March, uh, but um, we managed to launch um, the work of our digital SIFT group that is, um, that was, so we launched the RLUK um, Digital Sift and Research Libraries Manifesto. And um, so just look at the document. Uh, again, I've included some links in there for those interested. So we've got the webinar um, available on our website and the, uh, the, the manifesto. So is looking to address challenges around uh, four areas. These are the uh, skills and literacy, scholarship and collection spaces, stakeholders and advocacy. And so our networks are going to work in, um, on the action plan and to realize the, 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 the goals of the manifesto during uh, the, uh, the, next, uh, the next period. So there is also a call on our website for partners and collaborators if you're interested in in working with us in, uh, to deliver this uh, this manifesto, the Digital Sift Manifesto Process Library. So there is a form there. So if you would like to complete it, yes, please feel free to, to do so. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Christine. Let's see if there's anybody else. Ah, Christian. Yeah. <clears throat> well, how am I feeling? Um, you can read it. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbits. It's the only way to be sure. This this has been one year of utter hopelessness. Uh, on the other hand, I'm uh, I'm I'm functioning well at home. We uh, we are both able to work uh, from home, and we would probably not have have that much of a problem staying at home for the next year if if necessary. Uh, regarding the COVID, the library is completely locked down. Uh, we are gradually opening uh, so students can pick up books and return books. Uh, we are expecting to open some of our reading rooms relatively soon. Uh, but all training, all teaching, all everything has been moved online, uh, including our open workshops where students can come in with uh, their own data and their own problems and we try to solve it for them. Um, and that has worked surprisingly well. Um, we are now trying to, uh, to open and we need to figure out how to use the student's keyboard on their own laptop without getting within one meter of them. And, and it's, it's going to be more difficult to open the library again and it was to close it. Uh, we are all pretty busy. Uh, 
some of us thought that when we uh, were sent home, we would now figure out which meetings could have been an email instead. And instead, we uh, found out uh, how many of the emails we usually get that can uh, apparently uh, be turned into an online Zoom meeting for, for an hour. Um, so, so a lot of our colleagues, uh, especially people who are actually able to work from home and working with data you, you can, uh, are more busy than they have ever been before. We are seeing uh, some issues on the uh, on the access to data. Uh, it's certainly not COVID related, but uh, copyright issues are continuing to give us problems, even to to a degree where established services are probably uh, not something that we can use in in training and teaching anymore uh, due to copyright issues. Um, we are going to uh, restructure the labs and. It's important to note here that we have two kinds of labs at the Royal Library in Copenhagen. Uh, we have the technical lab, and I don't think uh, Katrine Nekasa is here today, and we have the student-oriented labs of which I'm head. And we are going to, uh, to restructure the way our labs are organized. No one knows how it's going to turn out, but we are going to work closer together with our research services and hope that we can get a better grip on the contact to, to our students or, or uh, through our researchers in that way. We're working on a, on a data sprint for the library organization in Denmark or the research library organization in Denmark. And we hope that will uh, contribute to, uh, to some of our colleagues' understanding of how you can work with data. That is increasingly important because the people negotiating our licenses need to understand the importance of actually getting access to data when we negotiate a license. And, and that comes as a, as a surprise for them every time. So, so we are working on an increased understanding among our colleagues on the importance of data. Okay, is, is that it? Christian? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, Katrina, do you want to add anything? Um, or did you just literally just join now? Uh, I just uh, joined right now. I think I can add a few, a couple of things. Uh, if uh, the one sharing the screen can roll up to the beginning <laughs> of, um, yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, everyone is good. Uh, COVID related. <laughs> um, we had one request from a research on the Net Archive uh, doing a, a COVID uh, pr project on, on our cultural heritage cluster. And we're currently working on that. Um, it's not that we have the resources, but I think it's very important. And since we have the, the cluster standing there, it might as well um, be, be used for that. Um, yeah, access to data. Yeah, uh, my favorite. <laughs> um, we, we have, we're still trying to do a lot of attempts. Uh, at, um, Christian was mentioning some of it. Um, we want to get, uh, like, like you do in, at the British Library, we want to get more access at the, the, the libraries. Uh, right now we just have, I don't know, is it 10, 10, 10 computers where you can access our data, Christian? I think it's something like that. So something we want like to, that, yeah. We want to um, try hard to, um, to see if we can double that. And there's a lot of lawyer stuff and, and yeah, you know the drill about that. Um, yeah, new proposals on the cluster, which you, you all know we have, uh, I think we have um, about six, six projects that are going to run in, um, in fall. Um, uh, it's mainly the net archive that they're going to work on. One of them is also quite interesting. That is, um, um, a researcher, he wants to do a hackathon uh, on the cluster over a period of time and he wants to invite people in. He is already inviting people in um, so they can, they can work on, on, on a project. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of researchers can work on the same at the same time on, on a project. Um, yeah, that was it. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to go to um, Tim. And then Olga. Olga wants to give a quick update. Up. So Tim, if you want to go. Uh, okay, I'll um, I'll just mention a couple of things. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so we, we started the year sort of um, not being able to leave the house because of bushfire smoke in Canberra. Uh, moved to Tasmania and now the borders are closed and we can't leave the house. So anyway, um, yeah, um, I will just mention that um, uh, I've been working with um, Andy Jackson at the British Library and the National Library of Australia, and National Library of New Zealand, and all thanks to the IAPC. Thanks, Olga, um, on a, a new section of the GLAM workbench devoted to working with web archives. Um, and so I think there's about 15 notebooks, Jupyter notebooks in that section. Um, it's very much aimed at um, researchers who are just sort of wanting to start making use of web archives and using the sort of freely available data. So um, from APIs uh, rather than, uh, you know, working with WARC files or downloading huge quantities of data. Um, so you might like to have a look at those. And in particular, I suppose I'd like to um, stress that uh, because a lot of them, uh, the notebooks are actually based on um, using the Memento um, protocol, the Memento standard. So the notebooks could actually be quite easily adapted to work with other web archives, which make, which are, which have Memento compliant systems. Um, there at the moment, you'll see, if you have your look, you'll see, they say whether they work with or which ones they work with. And I've just uh, listed the, the institutions that I was working with. So um, the UK web archive, the Australian web archive, New Zealand web archive, and also the internet archive. Um, but there is one exception because um, Olga asked me to put it in. So there's one of the notebooks which actually works with the Icelandic web archive as well, uh, just to demonstrate that it's actually quite easy to adapt the notebooks um, to, um, um, to work with other, other web archives. So, um, so if you're wanting to sort of uh, point people towards using um, National Web Archives, uh, that could be a useful place for you to start. Um, and I might just also mention that um, my university, I'm, I'm one day a week at uh, the University of Canberra um, and to fulfill my teaching obligations for the year, uh, I'm giving a, a three day um, short course uh, coming up in July, which is all about uh, using Jupyter Notebooks to explore GLAM data um, and uh, develop your own GLAM workbench. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be sort of synchronous components. So it's probably not going to work great from a time zone perspective, um, but I'll make all the stuff from it available um, so uh, you can uh, have a look um, at it anyway. Okay. Okay. Thanks. thanks a lot, Tim. Olga, did you want to add a couple of things? Yes, if that's okay. Uh, I, I'll just add to what Tim has already mentioned that uh, we'll uh, organize two webinars. So we'll try to make them time zone friendly. <laughs> but essentially, there'll be an opportunity for Tim to answer questions about the Jupyter notebooks he presented, and I'll try to get. Uh, his collaborators from the different libraries to answer questions as well. So BL, New Zealand and Australia, maybe we'll get someone from uh, the Internet Archive as well. It, and it's part of, of um, three projects and IPC is funding this year and all of them are somehow focused on, on research use of web archives. So we have one project from uh, Biblioteca Alexandrina with New Zealand as well. I pasted a link to what they're doing. So they're trying to visualize web archives. That's incredibly ambitious, but also create a repository of use cases. Um, and another one is just a datathon, which, we'll, which we had to postpone, but we'll probably have a webinar just looking at how they prepare their work files for, for the event. And that includes all the legal implications, <clears throat> how you can use it and so on. Uh, a, a big COVID related project this year for us has been a collaborative collection, which is a transnational web archive collection. So we had over 150 contributors to that. I think we've just reached around 7,000 uh, websites at the moment. I pasted a link because it's it's an openly accessible collection uh, hosted by the Internet Archive. And we're also thinking, uh, because it's so massive, we'll probably try to 
create a subset which can be used for projects. And I've published guidelines, uh, you know, how you can actually use our collections if you wanted to try in the lab setup or, I don't know, an event. And I, I also created a, a survey, a very short one, just trying to map all the COVID web archiving collections. Uh, I posted a link if you want to contribute. Uh, it's not. It's mostly about web archives, but also we're looking at how the COVID-19 web, arch web archive collections fit into a wider context and if libraries work with researchers or plan to work with researchers and more essentially what kind of access they will be providing. Um, so that's mostly it. And sort of COVID related, I had already been working from home. So for me, this was literally no transition, <laughs> but I don't think... I I've created, more, I, I've created probably about 20 slacks for different projects. And my main tip is that if you create a slack, especially if it's a small one, make sure you have two channels. One is the animal channel. It's extremely popular and it does help people <laughs> to stay sane. And the second one is the COVID humor channel. I've noticed that these are the two most popular channels. But yes, I think I currently am running about 20 <laughs> different slacks. We do have the Glam Labs one. We just have to make sure it's more active. <laughs> okay, um, thank you very much. I think what I'll do now is just to sort of keep in time. Um, I'm going to um, ask um, Christy to give a bit of an update and it sort of nicely segues onto the next agenda item, which is sort of um, the discussion around uh, ment uh, mentoring. So um, Christy, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so our lab in South Australia is um, somewhat unique and a little bit fraught. It's a collaboration between four um, state-funded cultural institutions, being the State Library, the Art Gallery, the Scientific Museum, the South Australian Museum, and um, a number of social history museums that make up the History Trust of South Australia. Um, so we're relatively new. We, we had a soft launch in 2019 and then just before everything shut down in March, we, we had a, um, a fairly public launch and launched our new digital fellowship and some new collaborations. Um, and I think it's fair to say, given our governance and our operational sort of structure, um, each of the four institutions have, have had a lot, uh, have had other priorities recently, um, as we've shut down our museums and our galleries and our libraries. So we've been a little bit in, not, not terribly active. We're about to hopefully start working with Tim to develop some Jupyter notebooks for South Australian collections. Um, yeah, we're working with the state government to look at some some state level data repositories and some presentation layers. Um, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, we're about to relaunch the the cultural fellowship um, later this month. And yeah, I guess uh, for me, yeah, wouldn't it be nice if um, you know we're stuck over in Australia, different time zone? It's really hard to connect sometimes with the European and the American Amer American colleagues. Um, and so I found in establishing our lab, I found this group, this international community, invaluable. It's just been so helpful, and everyone's been so generous and so open and willing to share. And so I would love to to build on that and and find find ways to not necessarily institutionalize this kind of this idea of peer learning and mentoring, but but actually just if we as an international community can start to, to foster that in some more structured way um, would be fabulous because I found it brilliant. And um, yeah, and I think Tim said, I think it was late last year, Tim was saying, you know, there's been a change in, in the way um, people in labs are talking and it's much more about sharing and being open and, and kind and generous. Um, and so, you know, the people that I've encountered in this community have been like that and it would be great to, um, to just build on that some more. Um, so I'd be interested to know, in, you know, to know people's thoughts on, on how something like this could work and whether it needs to be institutionalised or, or not. Okay, okay, thanks, Christy. So, perfect segue onto the next agenda item, which is mentoring. Um, 
And I'm just going to just say, um, for everybody else, I can see that you've started to put some updates in there. That's great. Um, I'm going to just, uh, in the interest of time, switch to the next agenda item, which is about peer learning and ment uh, mentorship. So this is kind of Christy's sort of already sort of um, uh, introduced the topic, but um, this is something that's kind of happened a little bit informally, but I think it's sort of, it's time to sort of make this probably a little bit more visible. And um, what we um, what we would like to have is a is sort of a quick discussion on whether people think this is a good idea, whether they would be prepared to be a mentor or would want to be mentored. Um, and then just sort of some, some fundamental questions around the topic. So the sign-up sheet, actually, uh, that, was, that would be your first action. If you're interested in being a mentor or a mentee, if you can still see my shared screen, um, I have a, oh yes, there's a sign-up sheet there. And there's a column uh, where you can add, your, if you've attended the session and you're interested in being um, a mentor or a mentee, you could just put yes in that column there and that would be your first action. But, but just, um, just to sort of get a, a feeling um, from everyone, um, just get to this bit here, is you know, how we should organize it. I think the sort of general feeling, Christy, was that we would do this in a sort of semi-informal way. Yeah, I mean, I guess we've had lots of different discussions about it, haven't we? Like some of the more informal um, mentoring hasn't necessarily worked as well. And, and there's some talk about there needing to be it needing to be somewhat built into people's, um, you know, I guess, day jobs uh, into into their institutional roles to, to make people to make it a little bit more visible um, and to elevate it, its status and to make people accountable. Um, yeah, or, or whether that's something that this labs community can do and we can we can make that visible in other ways. Um, uh, does anybody, anybody else want to comment? Does everybody think it's a good idea? No, of course. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Um, this is Neela talking. Uh, the thing is, uh, often I, I have a feeling that there's there's different paces at which uh, institutions can go forward, and um, we are very much searching as a smaller institution. There's no funding. There's no. How can I say it? There's actually one role that is advising digital humanities researchers from the library, but is actually not very much working actively on collections as data for example and working with the data um, so we'd be very interested to be part of a mentorship program probably more as a mentee at the moment than as a mentor but later that can uh, turn around of course yeah i mean i'm just to sort of add i've always i've always hesitated um about the idea of being a mentor because i kind of feel i can equally learn as much from the other person than, than the other way around as well. So I'd see it sort of as, as a sort of a two-way thing. Um, and I, I think um, uh, the, the one important thing is if we can identify those people who want to be mentors or be mentored um, is how we would allocate it how we would set it set it up would it just be sort of informal somebody asks somebody randomly any thoughts topic based i well that's what i was going to suggest maybe it's not so much as um getting mentor and mentee together but more having topic based discussions that are open for people to tap into maybe Um, I mean, I, I know one of the things that I really appreciate is having a sounding board uh, to to uh, to think about whether some of my ideas are crazy or not. Um, sometimes that works well with one person, then a group, but maybe maybe it could be a combination. I mean, like if it becomes a topic based, isn't that isn't that different to being a mentor or the sort of the whole idea of it? Uh, 
from my point of view, for for instance, uh, I I could be a mentor, but depending uh, on the topic, uh, I mean, uh, I, my, depending on the background of the person, uh, you can do better than others. So I was maybe thinking that it could be nice to have like a like a team it could be work better better than only a mentor because for example me as a mentor i could help with jupyter notebooks with data science with link open data but uh, what about managing what about the uh, promoting the lab i don't know so maybe we could think about uh, having a a team as a as a mentor i don't know i could be a little bit scared about being only myself a mentor for someone but i could be more uh, i don't know uh, better if uh, a group of persons is uh, deciding on something than mm -hmm. all myself Uh, That's an idea. I don't know what do you think. <laughs> um, uh, I'll, 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 yeah, go. I, I think I think we have special needs that that we should look into. I mean, for my, some people, it might be good to have a mentor um, uh, and to be a mentee. But I also, I actually, okay, I actually also <laughs> agree with you, Gustavo, that it could also be nice to have some small groups when you have some topics um, that you discuss. Because I, I, I'm sure that we're not interested in the same thing, at least at the same time, but um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I was just going to say, <clears throat> at various points, we need different things. And I mean, I've been involved in sort of group discussion topics when when and it's been about sharing and um, and other times it, there's been a, a formal mentoring process, a peer to, or a peer peer learning process. Um, and that's tends to be a much more holistic thing uh, that helps you navigate what it is that you're trying to, to navigate um, as an entire person, as opposed to just having a technical need or, or a specific um, specific need at any one point. So perhaps there is room for both. Uh, was there someone else? I think it was, uh, I may have missed that. I, I think um, what I'm getting is that um, we try to make we, we try to do both and my, my one of the important questions is do we make do we make this a little bit more visible um for example on the glam labs website would that help i think yes so. i think it's a good idea okay Yes, this is what I wanted to add, actually, is to use the, the website. You can just propose the themes and we can have votes on such themes. So we can then divide the groups according to the interest in these themes. So the themes with the top or higher votes, uh, maybe we, we would find more people interested in such topics and then categories of the topics. So, sh sh I mean, I'm just thinking uh, in terms of small groups, shall we look at, shall we suggest a couple now to sort of start to get the ball rolling? Maybe, um, I don't know, collections as data, computational access, uh, any, any other thoughts? Um, copyright. Okay. <laughs> I'm and new initiatives, one. new initiatives related to digital humanities, uh, either social media like um, wiki edited on or what, whatsoever initiatives that's related to digital humanities. So. Whoa. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, you're, um, if you're interested in becoming a mentor or a mentee. 
could you add your name to the to the Google Sheet here? And um, maybe I need to add another column um, and just call it something like, uh, say, I don't know, uh, I'm not sure, collections as data. Maybe we can add small subgroups or something like this, Jupyter Notebooks. Um, and then we can start to sort of establish who's interested. And then we, the next thing would be just to organize those things either on a sort of one-to-one -one basis or small group basis. And just please feel free, you've got full access to edit the spreadsheet. So just add interesting things that you want to add. Um, let's just get, oh, I'm still here. Okay, slightly confusing. Um, um, okay. Um, yeah, um, we're, we're going to continue this discussion tomorrow morning uh, or tomorrow afternoon, your time, Christy. So um, we're going to feed all this back into um, uh, for everyone. So please come back to the notes for this meeting. But um, I think it's time to do something a little bit more formal than, than we have in the past. I think that's clear. Okay, um, moving on. Um, so there's, there's, there's really two more things and we've got about 14 minutes before the end. Um, there's a, something called loosely sort of uh, grouped together called communications. And I've just, um, although it's a sort of an agenda item there, I've just added a, sub, a number of topics. Um, I suppose the one thing that kind of um, was, was going to be happening uh, I think it was in May, wasn't it? We were going to be having the Library of Congress uh, global meetup. So I suppose one of the one of the questions is, um, should we be doing something like that online? Because um, that's probably what we're going to be doing for the next ten years. So, um, what 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 do people think? I mean, I, I don't think Abby's is Abby on the call here. Abby Potter. From the Library of Congress. Anybody from the Library of Congress? I can't see anyone. No, I don't think they're on the call. Um, but um, that was the original idea. So uh, what I mean, I'm going to put a plus one for something online. Possible. And I will add a plus one to that. So if you're interested um, doing if we if if people are interested in sort of doing that, um, having a sort of, I think we should, I, I think one thing I've realized is I've missed these, these catch ups. I think it's just really, it's just quite inspiring just to sort of see what other people are doing. And it's quite a, a sort of a, an important motivator in terms of in relation to the work, the work that I do and sort of in, in the lab. So um, uh, I think there's, I think there's some general feeling of using the website a bit more. Okay, so one of the actions, easy actions could be to make the mentoring um, and small groups visible. Also, um, Gustavo, you said about making some of the Jupyter Notebooks. Yeah, we could have uh, a section for Jupyter Notebooks. And I was thinking also about uh, uh, publications, I mean, in journals, research publications, but wouldn't it make sense to, to make a sort of Zotero bibliography of publications and just embedding it in the website? Uh, for my point of view, it's uh, interesting to have the most important uh, publications in the website. So in case I want to reference to the uh, community, uh, you have some links uh, if you're writing a paper, I mean, but this is an idea. Okay, um. So th that would work in the same way. I only suggested Zotero because if we if we open it up to the whole group, anyone can just add their publications and we just make them visible on the website. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, w one of the things around um, 
a global event, I think that's going to involve more planning. If we're going to do it online, how we do it, whether it's going to be via Twitter, a combination of sort of live talks, live workshops, things like that. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, a free frequency for catch ups. Yes, that's a good idea. Um, every month, every two months. <laughs> Let's let's put it down. Let's um, hang on, and then you can vote. Oops. Okay, I'll do plus one first. Oops, wrong keyboard. Oh, sorry. Uh, online. If I say monthly. Bi-monthly, quarterly, oh. right. well, you can see the spelling. <laughs> I'm going to go for bi-monthly. Oh. Okay. Um, also, um, I mean, there are channels, some, um, I mean, people are just using their own thing. We do have a Slack channel. Uh, there's a link to the sign up for the Slack channel. I'm and, not even going to look at And Mahan Raven used it twice. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, you know, let, let's just sort of, let's just beat ourselves and say, need to do more Slack and more mailing lists. Um, uh, more stuff on the website. Um, also, I know there's been some work on the translations of the Open Glam Lab book and sort of discussions. Um, I had a discussion with Milena about the impact of that. Um, so there is an Arabic version, if you didn't know, um, that um, Milena has sort of been involved in coordinating. Um, and there are other translations on the way. Um, I know. Um, you mentioned Gustavo about the Spanish one. Um, uh, there's a French version as well. Does anybody know what the status of that one is? A little bit about the French one, but not much. I know people from France are interested in doing the translation and they're going to be in contact with Sally, but I don't know in which point is this uh, translation. But they, they were very interested. And I think we have something in the Slack channel about the translation in, into French. And regarding the Spanish one, we also have included a new chapter, not a long one, uh, about uh, Ibero-American labs. How could them be developed there? So just to have an additional uh, uh, if you have seen the, the map in the Glam Labs website, in America, we don't have many items. So for me and us as a Spanish uh, people, I think it's interesting to promote labs there. But I'm trying. <laughs> Let's see. So Qatar University Press was interested to publish a French version, but uh, uh, we started discussing before the outbreak and then this conversation uh, with Sally and the, with the press sort of uh, faded away. Uh, I suppose we can, uh, we can restart uh, and see what we can do before our campus closes here because we have a few months to complete all sorts of spin-off projects. Okay, and I think um, Milena and myself, when we, we, we were sort of um, pitching for the idea to do the, the book sprint at UCL Qatar, um, we'd actually also incorporated the, the possibility of getting funding for an impact study, which we didn't get. But um, so it would be nice to do some kind of gathering of the kind of impact that the book has had. Um, and maybe that could be um, a sort of a separate spin-off group to, to discuss that. Um, I think that would be quite useful. I think um, maybe it's just a questionnaire or something just to sort of 
capture some of that. I know, I know there's some anecdotal evidence that we have. I think all of us have that. We could probably uh, talk about us using it personally, but knowing other people who've used it. So for example, I think the Finns mentioned that they, they actually looked at it um, in relation to sort of setting up their own lab. Um, so I'm just conscious of time. And um, what I would just encourage is obviously uh, some of us have spoken, some of us haven't, but please feel free to add anything to the document. Um, I know that we didn't have time to talk to Clemens about um, some, a chapter or, or a, a chapter he's written, I don't know if it's in a book. Clemens, do you want to say something briefly about that, about AI in libraries or in glands, if you're still there? Uh, yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, so um, that's basically there's that kind of uh, set off a bit on, on Twitter. It's basically just... Uh, uh, a German uh, language article about um, a fairly de a detailed description of um, our AI uh, project and its workflow. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've had some requests and I'm currently uh, checking. Sorry, there's some uh, noise in the background. Um, I'm currently checking the possibilities to do like a more uh, general kind of uh, overview paper in, in English as well. Um, and um, maybe what's interesting in this regard is um, there is from the Europeana tech community, there is a, a dedicated task force to investigate AI in uh, GLAMS. And um, last week there was a survey published, um, which um, is quite extensive and detailed, but um, we would very much encourage um, also people from this group um, who have projects dealing with AI or IDs uh, to take part because the more responses we get, uh, the more goats we will donate to people in need via Oxfam. And I'd be happy to share the link to the survey in the, in the minutes. The survey that donates goats. Yes, Ooh. so we wanted to encourage participation. Um, we, for every 20 responses we get, uh, one do goat gets uh, donated to a, a community in need. Excellent. Um, that's brilliant. So um, help us get more goats, please. <laughs> um, Cool. Okay. Um, so um, it would be great. I mean, part of the sort of the, the reason for having these catch up is to sort of find out what other people are doing. So feel free to just paste some some URLs into this into this document. And we've we've only got a few minutes left, really. But um, uh, the sort of final agenda item was really looking at ideas for community building across Glam Labs, and um, I know that over the last year or so, there's been lots of collaborations um, in terms of, um, I know Sally and Gustavo and various other colleagues sort of been involved in a, in a big EU proposal. Um, and um, there must be other things that people are doing. Um, I think a lot of the work that we will be doing in the future will be online, but um, if there's anybody aware of uh, any funding ideas or funding proposals that kind of helps us grow the community. Um, I mean, is anybody can think of something off, off hand now or? Uh, I think this section really was about, um, you know, things that we can do to sort of, you know, collaborations. This is kind of the wish that I had that, you know, um, that labs collaborated more extensively um, with their data and their services. But um, if, there's, if there are things that people would like to do or suggest, please kind of put them in there. But I don't, I want to sort of keep on time because I know you probably, some of you got, I've got a next Zoom meeting straight after this one. So, um, is there anything else anybody wants to add before we finish? Any other business? 
I mean, just to sort of reiterate what um, Clemens said, I mean, a lot of, there is a lot of interest in computation in libraries. There seems to be a lot of discussion going on around using mm -hmm. AI, Jupyter notebooks. That seems to be something that's really receiving a lot of traction at the moment, just from my own sort of perspective. Um, Okay, uh, just I, I will just add one thing to communication. So if you have any updates on projects and I can also go through the list in the document, uh, you can contact me or just paste them on Slack because then I can retweet them through the Glam Labs Twitter. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm trying to follow most of the projects, but I don't know about uh, all of them. So it helps if you just send me a what you want to amplify through Twitter. Cool. Thank you, Olga. Okay. I think we will, um, let me just stop sh screen sharing and get back. Okay. Um, I think we'll, we should stop there just because of time. I just like to and thank everyone. Team has to, and team and Christy has to go, ha they have to go to bed. It's probably yeah. after midnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to see them. Um, well, I'll see Christy um, tomorrow morning, uh, my time, actually, your afternoon. Um, it reminds me the book sprint times. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, so I just want to thank everyone. Um, thank, thanks for participating. Um, and, you know, uh, I will organize the next um, meetup based on what people have agreed. What, uh, after tomorrow's meeting um, and in terms of the sort of the frequency um, but thanks for everyone for attending um, and uh, speak to you again and stay safe thank you okay. bye you're bye you bye thank bye. you bye bye, bye. bye. bye.